what's so difficult when you look at the whole Bobby Christina thing, especially, like I said, I, I already saw it from before. As soon as it happened, they were making those links, and they showed how the the father, um, Bobby Brown, was alienated, you know, or has been alienated or estranged, even though um, if you look, if you weigh and balance all the evidence that's out there, if you don't have an, an agenda or if you're not being compelled by this demonic um, tilt of the Babylonian media, you will see that he wasn't the problem. In fact, if Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown were able somehow to get beyond the, the, media, um, the media persecution, they might have maintained their relationship and might also, and, and she wouldn't be alive basically today. You know, everyone want to blame him, but most people who are blaming Bobby, you know, Bobby Brown, most people who are blaming him are um, those who have already succumbed to the, the Luna Nutty Babylonian media and the, and the demonic the demonic tilt, the deception, in other words, the deception. They've already kind of agreed with the deceivers, with the liars and everything. Because what they don't recognize is that the media is one of their tools. In fact, they call the media, the media is called the, um, they call it the, what is it, the fourth estate or the fifth estate or something like that? The fourth estate or the fifth estate, something to that effect. You know, in other words, it's a part of, it's a part of the, the structure of Babylon, the structure of Babylon. Um, then we also have the OES. Remember, I was talking about the, 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 the order of the Eastern stars and what's behind Whitney Houston's um, murder or, quote, death. Is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a pretty vast conspiracy, even though there is, a, there is a, a unit, like a unit that carried it out. And many of these people, we've seen them, we've seen their faces, you know, um, as this story has been developed. But I say it's very difficult. When I say it's very difficult concerning um, Bobby, uh, Christina, I would suggest to I and I people, like, you know, to, you know, pray that she finds the way to not the state of Israel, like the place so much, but to that consciousness firstly. Because you could run to a place, but if you don't have the spirit, if, you're, if your spirit is not right, then you're going to be out of place in the place, like the Israelites were. They were out of place in the place because their spirits were already seduced by by um, strange gods, and they already were in violation of Jah's law, like the lost sheep are in a continuum. That's why we blame the church. We blame the so-called black church, because there's some videos. I thank you for you know um, you know getting those videos. You know there's some videos out there which um, basically ones and ones are looking at the funeral of Whitney Houston, really examining what kind of funeral was this and examining how they so-called eulogized her and, 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 and really the fruit, looking at the fruit, you know, of many of these individuals from God's, the biblical Christ perspective, not from the world's perspective. So those who think from the world's perspective they become unwitting accomplices of satana, of satana, of that fallen female angel who generations of humanity call Satan. Now, to explain that, that feminine, masculine aspect might take a little bit more, you know, more um, work and study and bring in different resources and going to certain key areas of scripture. But let's, let's say that Satana is the soul of Satan. So Satan is usually as a male, outer male being. But the 
inner soul of Satan is feminine because every soul in energy, on, on, on the spiritual energetic level, is a feminine energy. Every soul is a feminine energy. You know, and we learn this from the Afro-Shemitic, from the Hebrew, from the Ge'ez, from the Amharic, so forth and so on. This is why they say that women are more spiritual, or rather, women are more sensitive, inclined to sensitivity about spiritual things. But if they are not in the proper discipline themselves, like the Bible says how the woman should learn in quietness. It's not just saying don't say nothing, but it's a quietness of spirit. It's, 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 a, it's a maturity. And, and then how many of our daughters and how many of the black women of this present 40-year generation in the wilderness, you know, have um, been brought up. We have this doll-making factory. We have this divaism. We have this so-called goddess syndrome or syndrome, you understand, Cinderella syndrome. This is what we're, this is what we're confronted by. Presently, this is why we did the Kogal, Gogal teaching, because it's something that's been on our heart and mind for a while as we study the scripture. Some would say, why does God seem to be pointing to this bad woman in the scripture? He is the male God pointing to this bad woman, but then he also points to the good woman. So it's not that the only woman, all women are bad, but he's making a clear distinction. It's like pointing to to when we have like like Jacob and Esau, you know, those contrasts. Like when we have um, Babylon and, and Jerusalem, you know, um, or we have uh, Rome on one hand and Ethiopia. There's these contrasts. We have the Ethiopic church and then we have the counterfeit church. You know, we have these contrasts. And, and all of those are symbolically females, nations, churches, even 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 peoples sometimes are figuratively considered to be a woman or take on a a feminine energy, and this might be hard to understand for English speakers. You see, because most of the English speakers in the language English, we don't see those genders in in the language. If you were to read the Hebrew or were to read the Amharic. Um, or any of the other Afro-Shemitic languages, you'll find that gender is very, very important. But then when you turn to the translations in English, you know, where there's no pronoun, you understand, pronoun female, you don't get to see the female in the translation because the language is, is, is I won't call it androgynous, the, the language is neutered. The English language is neutered, so, so the feminine doesn't really show up, and that's an important aspect of, of, of how the word was revealed. You see, the Almighty did not originally reveal in English. You see what I'm saying? He originally revealed it in a particular Afro-Shemitic language that included all the elements. That's when we study the Bible and we, we look up a verse, and we go to the Strong's Concordance, if we're coming from the English, and, and we go to the Greek and look at what the Greek word means and, and look at other related words and ideas associated with that word, or we go to the Hebrew, or at the, at the real higher level, to the Ethiopic, which also bears witness very much to the majority of, 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 of what, is, what is correct, you understand, in the in the, in the Greek and in the, the Hebrew. So whenever the Greek or the Hebrew is correct with something, the Ethiopian version reflects it. Whenever it is incorrect with something, the Ethiopian version rejects it. And then it gives an, another, another reading of it, which amazingly, when you look at the context of Scripture, it matches, you know, like, it's like reading computer code. You know, or, or, or the media code, website code, or whatnot like that. The source code, they call it. And if, if the source code isn't right, when the page opens up, it will say that, that it's opened up with an error. Or something might not show up because it's not properly referenced. And we have that a lot in English. But if, you, if, if you're not used to anything different, then you're liable 
you know, unfortunate to accept it. So what we said was so difficult about the Bobby Christina thing, um, where they say that she's, where they say she's being like her mother, right? I mean, her name is interesting, too. You know, what do you think? Do you think that we should go through this with the people, break down Bobby Christina? Because the name Bobby is in, of course, we're going to say Bob, so forth and so on. But Ibob, basically, Ibob is, is a serpent. But if, if you're mature, you recognize that for the magicians of Egypt, they use the serpent, which is wisdom. Now, wisdom also is a, is a, is a female or feminine energy attribute. They use wisdom. Let's break this down right here. So Bobby, we have Bobby for I, and then we have Christina. Right? This is this is this is Whitney, um Whitney and and Bobby Brown's um daughter. Now Christina right here is Christina. Christina is what you call Christianity. Right? Christianity, right? Is Christina. Now Bobby, interesting about Bobby, you have Ibob. Right? Ibob. Ibob is a serpent. But remember what Christ says before you get it twisted. A lot of folks will say, What? Ibob? Bob is serpent? What about Bob Marley? Ibob. That's a serpent too. Uh oh. So that means don't be immature. Be mature. That's why it says um, in wrath, right, be, be children in wrath, but be mature, be grown-ups in knowledge. Be grown-ups in knowledge. So serpent can be good, can have a good aspect or a negative. Christ says be wise as serpents. So he gave us a key right there. That means that serpent relates to wisdom. Yeah, or, or as Rastafari would say, wise dome like a wise dome or wise mind, whizzy, so forth and so on. Now, Christianity or Christina basically means anointing, right? Uh, anointing, right? Um, excuse me. Yeah. Right, anointing. Don't I have this correct? Okay, English going back and forth. Anoint. Anoint. Anoint is A N O I T E D, right? Yeah, I guess some, sometimes you could, uh, people, sometimes I look at the English. The English looks, looks funny sometimes. The more you deal with the original languages, you begin to look at the English again and say, wow, that's what I've been looking at all this time? So it means anointing, right? Anointing, right? And anointing has to do with the oil, right? It has to do with oil. Oil was the original anointing. And then oil is symbolic of spirit, right? Oil is symbolic of spirit. So the Old Testament, it was anointing with oil, which was, which was um, um, symbolic of ordination. You know what I mean? In other words, like, like getting started. It was almost like, like coronation in a sense. Or in the West, they say inauguration. But in augury has to do with birds and has to do with um, old, outdated, um, primitive customs of, of the early fall people. You understand the early people who fell from 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 the light of God in Christ fell from fell from God in other words so they began to see things a little bit a, a little a lot differently you understand so oil is that first symbol and then we have right here the horn of oil then we have the spirit so spirit you know we could put this as an equal sign oil equals spirit as a symbol so what do we have so far right here when we look at the whole Bobby Christina the whole Bobby Christina matrix. You see, because there's a lot of folks out there that's going to be like, she's just like her mother. You understand? And her mother was no good. And that, 
you know, almost like they're happy. You know, almost like they're happy that that people have their lives all excuse my language fucked up. You know, you know, and, and I get. I know that says something about their spirit, but I hope that they repent even of that. Because we have to repent of many things. Everything that is not like Yeshua. Everything, and, and, and not just outer things, but, but, but inner things. Things in the innermost of the inner is what we have to repent of so we can conform our heart and our mind to his way. You see, and then as we do that, then as, it's like as we go to him, as we seek to meet him, you know, in spirit and in truth, he also meets us. So if we have something that we know we shouldn't be, especially in, in thought, thought is where it begins off, in spirit and in thought is where it begins first. Because if you're doing something or if you're caught up in something that you don't like that you're doing, like you say with a person getting help for, for some addiction, right? Um, they first have to recognize that they have a problem. So it's not that they first have to stop doing so-called drugs or stop doing whatever they're doing that they're addicted to. The first thing they have to really is recognize what it is that they're doing, what is the effect, and, and, and there has to be some sense of, um, um, uh, of a remorse, some, some, some change in spirit, some break, breakingness or brokenness in spirit. You, you, you know, and, and you should know if you have repented of anything. And if you have, then you recognize, yeah, you got to a point when, you know, you recognize, you know, like when we talk about, for example, eating, eating, eating debtors or eating like uh, so-called red meats and, and, and flesh, right, is that, you know, we used to eat steak and, and lamb chop. We talked about the other day, lamb chop, we had no problem how it tasted so forth and so on. But then when we got to a level of consciousness, it wasn't because we tried to make it taste not good, because when we ate it, it tastes good. Our mama, she, you know, she could cook, and that was one thing that she cooked that, that I, I, I personally liked. But while I was still in my parents' home, I basically said, I don't want no lamb chop. I mean, they thought it was strange. They, you, know, you know how ones and ones would try to still rope you or ring you in, so forth and so on. You smell it, so forth and so on. But then even as my mind changed to it, though I could still smell that it didn't, it didn't change in its nature, but my mind changed. My consciousness changed. And because my consciousness changed, it rejected it. So when they tried to kind of like uh, trap me, you know what I mean, I resisted it. But I didn't tell myself, oh, l lamb chop or, or, or steak didn't taste good when I was eating it. I wish I could throw it up now. No, when I ate it, it was, oops, I, I enjoyed it. You know, I asked if there's any more, if I could get seconds. But now when my mind changed, my consciousness changed willingly. So it's, it, it's, it's my will. It's our will. This is why Jah is not going to snap his finger and, and make everything, make everybody feel high and so forth and so on. No, 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 no. He gave us free will for a purpose. You understand? He's not going to make us love him but he, like we are robots or automaton. You understand? But us willingly make our wills obedient to good influences of the teaching of the king of kings. Babylon and the Satanists say what they say. Um, do what thou wilt, that shall be the whole of the law. That's a lie. That's a lie. It, it is a part of, will is a part of law. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Make no mistake about it. But that's not the whole of the law. Basically it says, just do what you, whatever you want to do. And if you want to do it, your want and your desire, that's what makes it good. And this is why there are so many people um, spiritually sick. This is why some people are spiritually blind and, and suffering and, and, and are teetering on the abyss. They are teeter. They are staring in the black hole. They are basically staring in, in, in oblivion. You understand? Oblivion, even though they're, they're living in pleasures, oblivion is before their face. Now, bringing it back to this case right here, because we thought about this before, and, and, and we was like, wow, after Whitney and seeing, seeing how the media was going through, what about Bobby Christina? Who's going to such and such? And what about the father? Oh, he was a part of it. And even when witnesses came out and said, no, Bobby Brown 
he basically, see, we're using this as an object lesson. Some may say, well, why are we still talking about Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston, that kind of issue? They were living in the world. They sold their souls. Forget about them. You see, some people sell their souls consciously and know and regret it and repent it and, and try to find a way of escape, right? While other people have sold their souls unconsciously. You know, like when people say, oh, these ones deal with Illuminati. I, I think we all on some level are dealing with so-called Illuminati. I, I, have, have I lost some of y'all? Some of y'all are going to say, oh, Ross I, Adonis is dealing with the Illuminati. Well, well, let me tell you the truth. I'm dealing with the real Illuminati, the Illuminator. Ketamawi Haile Selassie and his Christ. You understand? The Lord is my light. He is the lux. He is the luck. So we talk about good lucks. You understand? It's not Lucifer as you think. You understand? That Lucifer fell from grace, fell from glory. When Satan fell from glory, guess what? It was no longer Luxifer, Lucifer. But a lot of folks keep saying it because other people keep saying it because the Satanists like that. You understand? The Satanists like that. They, that's the way they flatter their fallen master and make their master think that... Um, it still shall be well with him. But we began to look at the scripture and began to notice something here in um, Ezekiel. In Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel for a moment. Because Ezekiel, I think, speaks to, speaks to this, not just in the Whitney Houston case, because she is a symbol of a generation. We got to recognize that she is a, a symbol of a generation, right? And um, she's like the golden calf in a sense of, of, of a whole generation. People are invested in, in her and in her image because she's so symbolic for black people, almost coming from like the 60s into the, you could say, 70s, 80s, so forth and so on. She grew up, you could say, in that particular time. She shot to stardom. She achieved certain things which, in a sense, made all black people feel good and kind of made them stick their chest out and put their head up. We were proud of her. Now when we see what's going on, it makes us very uncomfortable. So what happens, people say, well, that's just her. You know, that's her. She made wrong decisions, such and such and such, because this and that and, and the next thing. And no doubt she did make a lot of wrong decisions. I think she's, she, when she lived, she admitted some of that. But she's still a symbol of the generation. It reminds me of the Michael Jackson thing. Remember after Michael Jackson, you know, all these things with Michael Jackson. Finally, he died or he was murdered as well by the Luna Nutties, by the Satanistic Luna Nuts. You understand? He was, he was murdered by them. And then everybody act like, even with the pedophilia thing, they act like they didn't have that red leather jacket. They act like they didn't walk around with one glove on. They act like they didn't have, like, the jerry curls in their hair. They didn't put, have penny loafers or put pennies in the penny loafers. They act like they didn't moonwalk, too, so forth. They act like they did not covet and long to be like Michael Jackson. Even many of us who are out of, out of that, that level of hell in Babylon who have come out of that. We have to be honest that when we, if it wasn't Michael, it was somebody else, right? Now, think about Bobby Christina. We're going to put this verse out here, first of all, before we move any fur further, right? Um, all right, I think that's have sneeze. Yeah, it says, behold, verse Ezekiel, Ezekiel, let's put this up here, Ezekiel, Ezekiel, um, Ezekiel, 1644, Ezekiel 1644, and um, I would like to put a question, there's a question mark here, you understand, because remember, she still has the ability to decide for herself, you know what I mean, and one still, hopefully she can decide for herself, you understand, and hasn't gotten so um, possessed and taken over, that maybe her free will has been has been augmented, you know, like the Bible even says that um um there are many ones and ones who are
taken captive by the devil against their wills. Did you know that? Did you know that there are many ones and ones who have been taken captive by the... See, we look at folks and we say, well, they chose that. And this doesn't excuse wrong decisions, but this helps us to be true representative of God and Christ, how, how, how Christ would look at it. That's why he says, don't, don't condemn. Don't be these condem uh, condemnatory folks. You, you know what I mean? T t so quick to condemn. Right? That person going to hell. Because um, maybe you're going there too if you don't repent. You know, maybe we all are going there if we don't repent. And basically, that's, that is, I'm talking about the fire pit. I'm talking about, I'm talking about a place that I really don't want to even talk about. But we should talk about it because that's a reality. You understand? That is a reality. And it's in the Bible. But right here we talk about do the will, good will, um, by the which will, uh, let's see, will right here where it says that they are taken um, captive, they are taken captive, captive by him at Second Second Timothy 2 and 26. Let's put Second Timothy right here. Second Timothy, um, Second Timothy 2 and 26. But we're going to deal with the first verse first. So Ezekiel... 1644 says, Behold, everyone that useth proverbs, which are like parables and similes, as Christ used parables in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the very same parable is a proverb. A proverb is a, a figurative, a symbolic, a verbal, I call, I call them verbal hieroglyphs, like a symbolic story. Or you can call them myths. They are basically myths, mythology, you understand? And um, there's more to that, but we're not going to go all into myths again right now, regurgitate that point. But um, cause the word myth, if you trace that word myth, it, it's the root of what is called mystery. There's the mystery of God and Christ, and then there's the mystery of iniquity. So that means there will be what we call myths, associated with the mystery of God in Christ, and there will be certain myths or interpretation of even the same or similar myth that's really associated with the mystery of iniquity. And, and, and to ignore these things would be to keep yourself in ignorance about what the Bible is really saying and what the right is, because many things in the Bible that the people who are speaking and expressing different prophets and different ones, and including some women, some women have written some, some areas of Scripture and some books in the Bible. They don't tell you that in the whitewash, false, false Christianity, but it's there in true Christianity. But it says, Behold, everyone that useth proverbs, misale, misale woach, shall use this misale, shall use this mishle in the Hebrew. See how close these words are? Amharic, Ethiopic, Misale, the Hebrew, the Hebraic, Mishle, Mishle, Misale. So use this proverb, Misale, against thee, saying, as is the mother, so is her daughter. As is the mother, so is her daughter. Now, before we even go further with this, here's a bigger picture. There's a big uh, narrative, you understand, that's in the backdrop of this. This is why um, when you look at the Bible and you really sincerely seek to, to study it, you begin to learn about anthropology, you begin to learn about linguistics, you begin to learn about sociology, psychology, economics, philosophy, you begin logic, of course, logos, logic. You begin to learn about all these different what the world calls disciplines. You know what I mean? All these disciplines that some folks go to school and uh, university and become more full. You understand? Even some people go to seminaries. They're not even taught this. 
You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't allow the Holy Spirit to guide them, but had men and people because of, um, as it says in Jude, because of uh, uh, men's, what does it say? It says because of, because of advantage, admiration of, of people's persons, and, and to get some advantage. Because why graduate from this university and, and join this um, fraternity or sorority? I, I will always have a have. I will always be a slave. They'll never run me off the plantation. You see, and 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 that's basically you know where they where they lie or lay even to this day. But but here's the key point: as the mother, her daughter. If you look at it in your Bible, please take a moment, pause this, go to Ezekiel 16.44. You understand? And I, I say in the Bible, King James Version, because uh, a, a good version will show you some italicized words. The italicized words aren't really there in the, in the ancient, some of the ancient manuscripts. You understand? And, and most of these areas where they have italicized words, when we check them with the Amharic, the Metaf Kedus of His Majesty, these, these words are not there either. So if we would read this again, avoiding the italics at the second, the, our second pass over it, right? Avoiding the italics, here's how it would read. Behold, look and see. Everyone that uses proverbs shall use Proverb against thee, saying, as the mother, her daughter. As the mother, her daughter. Now, who's being spoken of here in Ezekiel chapter 16? In Ezekiel chapter 16 is speaking of the harlot tree or the harlot tribe. The, the, harlot, the harlot tribe. What a harlot tries. In other words, the harlot tree of, or the tree of the harlots, you understand, they branch off, you understand, and they be a bad fruit. The harlot tree of Jerusalem. Do you know the significance of this for black people? See, in your counterfeit so-called black churches, they don't tell you who you be. They say you're a Gentile. So if you think you're a Gentile and really don't know your ABCs or the first things about your true, your true history, such as from Babylon to Timbuktu, you understand? Or that we are actually in the Valley of the Dry Bones, you understand? Two very good books by Rudolph R. Windsor that will give you a basic foundation. I think we have one or the other, or you can order it. Maybe you can find it out there, but get a, get a copy of it. Invest in your education. Education, you know, all this money people spend on, on these college degrees just so they can find a slave-minded job makes absolutely no sense. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely no sense. Not all colleges are bad, of course. But, you know, um, most likely you're not going to get into one of those real colleges where they really bring out the best in you. You're going to get into one of the colleges where they program you to basically work for those who went to the other sort of colleges, like the Obama, Harvard, Yale sort of universities, and the Cambridge and Oxford, you know, where in those sort of schools, um, they, are, they are preparing the rulers, the future rulers of the society. And in the other colleges, generally speaking, these liberal-ass professors, these libelous professors and everything, they are basically training you to be the middle managers, the middle managers, and all the rest who um, don't really maybe get past uh, high school or G, uh, GED, so forth and so on, you're the so-called working slobs, the working class, cattle, so forth and so on. And it's not we that say this. It's their own documents. The Protocols of Learned Elders of Zion is a very, very good book. But I see that book, in, in, it's like a two-edged sword. And if we're holding the handle, we can work both edges of that. But that's, that, that's, another, that's another topic, hopefully, for another time. If you want to learn anything more about that, see our African Zionism, African Zionism um, um, series. Um, or you can, I think, maybe order it. Um, check it out. Check it out. Make a request. Hit us up, www.lojsociety.org, if you're interested. That will go into a little bit of that 
a little bit more. But let's deal with this right here, the harlotry of Jerusalem. So Jerusalem would represent God's soul people. That's what Jerusalem, let's put this up here. Jerusalem represents God's soul people. So now we have, remember this right here, we're going to go over this again. This is a breakdown, the Ethiopic breakdown of Bobby Christina. You understand? Of course they named her this so she can have her father and like her mother, you know, or, or, or this is not really her mother, Christina, but her father's input right here is not B-O-B-B-Y, it's B-O-B-B-I, I-A-E-I-O-U, sometimes Y. You remember that? But Jerusalem, Jerusalem, in this context, would be Jah's soul people still who, who are basically the, the lost black. Or, you know, nowadays niggas. There's the niggas nowadays, the lost, lost black folks. This is who Jerusalem, this is who Jerusalem is. In, in the spiritual and in the prophetic sense, Jerusalem. So when you're reading right here in Ezekiel chapter 16, and it's talking about the harlotry of Jerusalem, it's a very, very intense chapter. I mean, this, this chapter, Ezekiel chapter 16, is actually triple X, if you, if you could understand it, you know, when you really see what is really being said. There's some very explicit things here that are, it borders on the pornographic in thought when you can think, you know, when you're able to really de uh, decipher and, 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 and interpret, you understand, and interpret um, what it is saying. But to sum up and to, and, and, and to wrap this up, it is saying that as the mother is, so will the daughter be. And indubitably, this is so. Not in every single case. There's always exception to the rule. Really, the statement is not exception to the rule. It's that the exception justifies the rule or the exception proves the rule. The exception proves that there is a a constant, a general, a general constant. Once in a while, there's something will branch off differently. You understand? But generally speaking, it goes in this sort of a way. This is why when ones and ones, um, I remember older folks, you know, used to say this, um, like, and this is for the brethren, you know, for the men, them, that when you are uh, um, when you meet a woman, you know, when you meet a woman you're interested in, if you can, try to meet her mother and try to observe the relationship that she has with her mother and conversely and vis-a-vis -vis the relationship that her mother has with her. It would tell you if you are spiritual, if you are mature enough, it will tell you a whole lot. You understand? Know Never, if you can, Avoid that, you understand, know or get to know what her relationship with her mother is. And we're not going to generalize right here because that in itself, we'll deal with that on the Methuselah, on the Methuselah level. When we deal with the Proverbs of Methuselah, we'll try to touch on that in a little more detail. But we wanted to point that verse out right here, you understand, know because not just Bobby Christina. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not just Whitney Houston, but Whitney Houston was a major hit. Whitney Houston was not just some minor thing. It's, 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 a, it's a major hit because even myself, I'm not a Whitney fan. I, was, I mean, I like her music and everything. You know, I thought she was, you know, a beautiful, attractive woman, had a great, incredible voice. Um, I personally liked her relationship with Bobby, didn't like the being Bobby Brown thing, you know. Um, I like when they were having a relationship that was being quiet about themselves, you know, but that, then coming out, you know, the drug stuff and this and that. so forth. But then I recognized that they're black folks. They're coming from 400-plus years. You, you, you know what I'm saying? 
and, and then in one generation to go from from like zero to one thousand or zero to one million or zero to one billion. I mean, come on, you know. I mean, even even some so-called religious spiritual folks had great difficulty. Look at David. Look at David and, and King David. You understand? King David committed adultery and murder. But John's mercy was that the covenant that he made with David and with his house remained firm and firm for Iva. He swore and he will not repent. In other words, Yah gave his word and he's not going to turn it around or whatever like that. But he punished. You understand? He punished for such transgressions. Or David was punished. The consequence of his actions, the spiritual karma, in other words, came back, came back upon him. And if we read and study his life and chronicles, we see that. That's why we say that David had a son named Solomon, and Solomon had a son named David, and the kingdom of David was renewed in the biblical land of Cush or Ethiopia, fulfilling the prophecy of great King David. That princes or Mekwanan judges shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to the Elohim, Ha Elohim, the true God. And, and this was fulfilled in Solomon, King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba's time. This is why Christ made that parable, you understand, when he says that the Queen of Sheba, the Queen of the South, shall rise up in judgment against this generation and condemn it, for she came from the furthest points of the earth. And then also mentions, mentions um, um, Jonah, Jonah, you know, and Jonah equals a dove. And to show you how, how one symbol, it's important to interpret that one symbol, because Jonah, Jonah, Jonas means a dove, right? But then if you go to the, to the, the Latin and European, we have Colom. Colom as Columbus, Colom, right? And Colom, Columbia, also means a dove. So then you can recognize why they use the Columbia and the idea of Columbia so much in their matrix because Satan appropriates, you understand, the principles of God because Satan cannot build anything any other way. Because there's only, there's only one great builder. But the people who have turned away from God, he can fool and pretend that he is their God. By the <laughs> you know? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. By the mirror. He can fool by the mirror. And, and that, that, that kind of reminds me of another area in Scripture. We just saw it in, a, in, another, in another Brethren's video where it was talking about, um, you know, that... It's like, it's like one who, who looks in the mirror, you understand, like, like the reason for the law, you understand? The reason for the law is to highlight, you know, what sort of person we are, like a mirror. But what happens is that ones look at themselves when they look at the law, but then they go away from it and forget what sort of person, you know, what they have seen in that reflection because it, 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 it condemns them. So it is not a man or a person that condemns them, but it's the Spirit of God based on that, that logic of the Word that condemns you when you read it and you feel bad. And you're like, oh, man, that's what I did? You know, it, it's not, that's what Christ said. It's not, it, I don't condemn nobody, but the Word that I speak, it's the Word. You see, it's the Word, and where the black church failed, is because it failed to teach the word. It got into politics. You understand? It got into politics. It got into political so-called correctness. You understand? Political correctness. And once it did that, and the black church in particular, that's what we're focusing on, the black church, once it began to do that, you understand? Then it veered off into this prophetic area of Scripture that we know as, as the judgment parts concerning 
concerning that that falling away. Because it says in the last days there will come a what? A great apostasy. Apostasy means a falling away. You know, when we look at the, the old time black church, and some people say black church, they know the name black church, sign the church. Kumbaya, right? Kumbaya, yeah. There's only the black, I mean, there's only the church, really? These are people who are asking us to ignore. It's like asking a Jew, you understand, to ignore the Holocaust, or a European, uh, a Jebel Jew. You understand, asking a Jebel Jew to ignore the Holocaust. Now you're asking a, a, a Ethiopian Hebrews to ignore our own Holocaust experience. And see, that's what... That's the false doctrine that the black church started to preach to its, to its people, thereby not preparing them for the real spiritual warfare. And we can see how Whitney Houston, how, as they say, she fell for it. You understand? In that sense, she, she did not have the wherewithal, you understand, you know, within that preparation, though, the, though she made decisions that were obviously not, not correct on her own, but she did not really have, everybody keeps talking about, oh, the church that she, and it's the church that she, they've made the church an idol. It's no longer what Christ says, but it's what they say about Christ. You know, it's not, it's not the teaching that we find here, you understand, know in the Bible, you understand, know they give you one or two verses, right? You go to one of these churches, they give you three or four verses. Imagine that. Imagine how long if you relied on their two or three verses, and they don't go, let me tell you the least, most of them don't study anything. They just take these one or two verses, you know what I'm saying? They give you a song and a dance, they take your money, you know what I'm saying? And then they send you back into the wicked world to, to kind of fend for yourself. It reminds me of that boat that got shipwrecked. You remember that, that boat that ran up on the rocks? And the captain jumped off that boat and went home. He went home. That's exactly what these hired servants, so-called the majority, not all. Remember, there's exceptions to the rule. You understand? But the, there's still the rule. You understand? The majority would do the same thing as that captain did. Now we have Bobby Christina. The latest report is that um, she's going to be just like her mother, according to the, the so-called the national um, inquisitor, I mean, I mean, the National Enquirer, or is it really the National Inquisitor, according to the National Inquisitor, so that even if it is not true, they are going to, to the best of their ability, try to make it true. You see what I'm saying? But the key really is in her name. The first thing that she should do, of course, if she drops the body part, people will say she is, she is dissing, she's dissing her father. But they are already separating her father from her. They're saying that her father shouldn't be in her life because her father wanna get, get get Whitney's money. No. You see, y'all are y'all are not y'all y'all are missing the um the duppy. There's a duppy in the room. You know what I mean? You're missing the duppy in the room. That's Clive Davis. You understand? That's Clive Davis. You know, I mean, you could you could look at it. He already he's already setting up um, Jennifer Jennifer uh, uh, Hudson. You understand? Um, Brand, uh, Brandy. Um, 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 what is it? Monica. Monica. Um, all these other black um, so-called singers. All of them who looked up to Whitney. They love this Whitney. I love me some Whitney. I listened to her when I was young, and I, I, I know her song. I would do these duets, you know, just me and her. You're like, oh, you knew her? No, no, no. I just listened to her music. I mean, they loved her so much, right? They coveted for her gifts so much. See, if you covet, remember we was teaching on the Ten Commandments? I'm so happy we have this object lesson right here, that um, you can covet so much. Right? Coveting is one is a violation of one of the ten words, right? Isn't murder also another violation? You can steal. Now they want to have her redo, you know, um, all of Whitney's stuff. Why? What, what's in Whitney? She's well, going to do her stuff again so soon. What, what's up with that? Because 
the love of what is the root of what? The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. I mean, kind of evil that, that, that even, even past evil people couldn't even figure that. They'd be like, wow, that's real evil. You know what I mean? So we have this, 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 this shit going on, right? They divided, first of all, Whitney and Bobby Christina and Bobby Brown. They divided them. You understand? They were able to separate mother and daughter from father. They demonized the black man. Bad black man. Bad black man. I mean, I mean, what is really so bad? I mean, he, he never went to jail until he was 30-something. I mean, I mean, I mean what, what are you talking about? You understand? He's the one that tried to get intervention for his wife and everything. Bad black man. Bad black man. What's so bad about him? Because it's a black male. You understand? And black male is a crime. Don't you know that? Look it up. Black male is a crime. And please don't tell me about so-called spelling. What do you hear? Black male. You understand? Black, uh, why do they call it something else? Extortion. Why do they call extortion? Stop saying black male. It's amazing black people don't say saying black male, speaking of extortion, is offensive to us as black people knowing what we've already been subjected to as well. But you see, a lot of these, um, a lot of these people are, are, so, are so compromised. This brings us to our second, our second quote right here, our second quote right here. So when we say it's difficult with the, Whitney, um, the Bobby Christina, it's difficult. I mean, not for us to pray. We should, you know, we should pray for her or keep her in our prayers. You know what I mean? Keep her in our prayers. But hopefully she learns something. You know what I mean? Hopefully she, she, learn, hopefully she can pray too. You know, and, and hopefully she's praying to the true God in the name of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos. Hopefully, hopefully she knows how to pray and to surround herself with, with truly like-minded people and not to take any compromises. But she's like in a hornet's nest right now. You know, that's what we say, it's difficult. She's in a hornet's nest. Most likely, she's resisting, you know, the, the charms of Clive Davis. Because Clive Davis is acting like he's her father. What the fuck? You know what I mean? He's acting like he's her father. You see, money interest, see, when you make money a god, this is exactly what you have, have happening. You know, this is exactly what you have happening. I noticed something very interesting, too, and this is in the How to Make a Slave. You remember the part where they said that the um, they said that the black um, that the black uh, uh, woman, you know, is very important for economics, and we was touching on that before the breaking process of the African woman. The same things that they did to to, to Whitney basically to break her and break her spirit. You know, saying to break her and to break her spirit. Now they're doing it to her daughter. You remember they talked about that her daughter fell asleep in the very same bathtub before and, and she was saved by the bodyguards or something in the nick of time and then her mother, I think a day or so later, you know, would, would, would perish, would lose her life halfway in, halfway out and they don't express, like, how was she halfway in? Was she halfway in backward? Was she halfway in forward? You understand? They, they don't want to talk about that because it'll be too insensitive for the family. You understand? So why don't they just keep everything else wrapped up? But, but they keep talking about some things because it's a game. You understand? It's a game. But here it says, um, then take the female. I want you to understand this in connection with Bobby Christina right here. Before we get into this, let's touch on the scripture right here, 2 Timothy 2 and 26, where it says, um, and that they may recover themselves out of the sneer of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. You hear that right there? And that they may, you understand, and that, uh, let's go to the verse before so we give you a little more of the, of, 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 of the context. It says, in meekness, verse 24, and the servant of Adonai must not strive, but be gentle to all men, apt to teach, that means able to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. 
um, think about the logic of that. Sometimes we have to be, we, ha we have to have this gentleness and meekness just to instruct those who oppose themselves. They think they're opposing, you know, I don't agree with you, but if what I'm saying is the truth and you don't agree with me, you're really opposing yourself. You're not opposing me. You understand? Know so still has to be meek, you know, has to be meek. You know, don't take on any of those bad vibes. You understand? Know um, um, if it says, if God per adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. If, if God will give them per adventure, maybe, Manabat will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. So we see that repentance is for what? To acknowledge the truth because they're opposing themselves. They're opposing what is in their best interest. You understand? They're opposing the truth. But it is God, it is Jah, that must give them, in a sense, repentance. In, in other words, to strengthen their weakness. You know, because they've been, because, see, the context comes down perfectly right here, verse 26. And that they may recover themselves out of the sneer of Diabolos, the diabolical one. What does dia mean? Dia. Dia means two. What does Balin mean? Balin means to throw. Think about that. That shows you the strategy of the devil. Of course, we say devil means liar, slander. Yes, it does mean that in, 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 in the context of this, this being and beings influenced by that being. But, but on, the, on the spiritual mechanics of it, you understand? It is to throw across. It throws across your mind state to separate, you understand, to separate your, your soul, your psychological aspect from, from your, 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 your Godhead or your connection with God or, or to separate people from the Bible or to separate people from their so-called either Bible, God-based belief or faith, to separate them from that or even to separate them like in the case of, of Bobby, Christina's parents, Whitney and Bobby. And and come on, brothers and sisters, you know that this has happened in, in 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 thousands of cases of black people. So when we look at our community and see so many broken homes, divided families or or single mother households, it's not just the so called black woman. She's a part of it. It's not just the so-called deadbeat black father or baby father. He's a part of it. But then there's a bigger superstructure that nobody's dealing with and say, no, no, you don't blame, don't blame that. It's you, such and such and such. If you want to see, and, and, and next verse is going to explain why they say that. And that they may recover themselves. See, see they, <laughs> they need to recover themselves. You understand? Out of the sneer of Diablos, who, who now keeps them divided, you know, um, throwing out this negative, all these negative um, 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 thoughts and feelings and, and poisoning the otherwise good vibes by, by, by judging somebody, you understand, or making people believe, deceiving. It's deception, basically. Um, deception and distraction. Distraction that leads to ultimately deception. But here's the key. It says, out of the snare of the devil, the devil, who, the devil is the one, these are, are, are those who are taken captive by him. These are those who are taken captive by who? Diablos. These are taken captive by the devil. What does the Bible say in Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 26? who are taken captive by him at his will. That's deep right there. You've got to think about that for a moment. You see, when we study the Bible, not just to read it, but, but, but read every, every sentence, the chapter, then go through it and, 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 and break down the sense of it. You know what I'm Let's look at the sense of this verse right here. It says, in that they may recover themselves. Now, when you say, I hope so-and-so recovers, what does that mean? That means that they, they're sick, you know, um, they, they were hurt, 
um, they were injured, something happened to them, an accident or something on purpose, or they were attacked, or, you know, but they're in a way where they're not healthy. They're not, they're not, um, they're not sound. They don't have shalom. They don't have salam. They don't have wholeness, taina. They don't have peace, in other words. As His Majesty teach, um, anyone who suffers from a guilty conscience is not free un until he or she makes peace with their conscience. And the context of that is make peace with their conscience in and through the grace of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Joshua, Jesus Christos. Right? Now, that part says, and that they may recover themselves. So they are sick, they are wounded, they are injured. Out of the sneer, the sneer, uh, what is a sneer? A sneer is a trap. You understand? A, a sneer is a trap. Really, in, in this sense of the Bible, it was speaking like an animal trap. You know, like when one, you ever see like a, a, a rabbit or a, a bear or even, even um, other animals like, like wolves or whatever, when they get their leg caught in a trap? I mean, it's horrible. I mean, it's horrible. But this is this is what's happening. If it's horrible for for, for happening to animals, right? If if you have that much that much spiritual sensibility and recognize that's horrible when that happens to animals, you understand? Then how is it when a human being, you understand, a soul from God, gets caught up in such wickedness or the depths? These are some of the deep areas, because we're all caught up in this wickedness. We're in this Babylon. We're in this matrix. You still have to come out of it. You know what I'm saying? This is the prep. This is the prep. This is the preparation. But some of them go deeper. So, so you may be at the shallow area, you know, just, um, just, just slaving and hoeing for the system a little bit. You know, you say, I'm not, I'm not bad as them. I didn't go that deep. But if you could have, you would have, most likely. You see, there's very few people who had those opportunities and recognizing, you know, were mature enough to recognize what it was and rejected it. You understand? Most folks, unfortunately, would succumb to those temptations, you understand, to, to that which is in the world, in the seclora, you know, and would, quote, sell their soul. So it says, and that they may recover themselves out of the sneer of Diablos, the diabolical one, the diabolic who are taken captive. You know what captive is? What's a captive? Our old people were taken, oh, pirates, yes, they what? Rabbi. You understand? They, they, they stole our way. We became captive. We became enslaved. You understand? So these people, on a spiritual and psychological level, they're not physically in chains. You see, one time, our people were physically in chains. Like we, as Rastafari would say, they took the chains off our hands and our feet, and they put them on our minds. But I say they took the chains off our hands and our feet and put them on our hearts and our minds. You know what I mean? On our hearts and our minds. So these are taken captive by their heart and their mind. Why their hearts? Because Christ says that um, where a man's uh, treasure is, then his heart will be also. So if you live for the life and all the rubles and all the vanity of the world, you understand? If, 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 if that's what you really value, you know what I mean? That's what you value to uh, as a God, then, then, then you're susceptible to it and perhaps already uh, are captive, you understand? But here's the freedom right here, the knowledge, the acknowledging of the truth. Once one begins to acknowledge the truth, you understand, in the grace of our black Lord and Savior. And see what the grace means? That when you begin to acknowledge, you know, what's really going on, don't mean you have to shout I, 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 like a madman. You know, people think like, no. Because what the Christ said, he said, be wise as what serpents, right, harmless as doves. So there we have these two kind of metaphors together in the words who are taken captive by him at his will. Did you get that? That these folks are taken captive, are taken captive against their will, basically. 
but they are taken captive by the devil's will. And that's where that funny, you know, that funny bunny, that funny bunny, Bugs Bunny statement, um, do what thou will shall be out of the law. You know what I mean? Instead of thy will be done, thy kingdom come, as in heaven, so on earth. Instead of that, they're on some, they're on devil's will. They're seeking to do uh, the devil's will. You understand? And the devil said, do whatever you want to do, but don't do God's stuff. Don't do God's business. Notice that. The devil will tell you, do what thou wilt to be all the law. And then if you join those, 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 those human accomplices of Satan, and you say, I want to do God's business, God's business. Yeah, you, you'll see. They'll, they'll try to change your will, all right. You know, you know, so, so it's a trick. You know, they make you think, whatever you want to do, that's what you should do. Right. Yeah, right. You understand? No, that, that's wrong. That's a trick. That's a deception. But these are taken captive by him at his will, at the devil's will. This is why to really come out of these sort of situations we say it's difficult, you have to be willing to give up all. You see what I'm saying? I know that sounds like a lot. It is. A, a lot of junk, a lot of nothingness, a lot of stuff that the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth and, and, and the sea and all that is therein can restore um, tenfold, a hundredfold, or a thousandfold. That may seem like a lot, but, but, but that, because that means that you don't have faith that he truly exists and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But you believe that these little baubles of the world are so real, you know, and that's, that's the deception. That, that's part of the deception. And so these ones are captive by him at his will. So when we look at a Bobby Christina situation, her name, like we said, her, the, the Ethiopic breakdown of her name is very interesting. You understand? Because at a higher level, you understand, it's that wisdom of of the the true Christ or the or the anointing at a higher spiritual level. Unfortunately, her mama did not really lay out a way. The, the what what she laid out or what she left as as a kind of a shadowy, foggy kind of a foggy kind of um, 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 pathway or footprints in a sense, you know, like people love that footprints garbage, Ugh, footprints, get out of here, no, the way, the way, the way, you know what I mean, footprints, you got footprints going through, you know, you got footprints in, in mud, you got footprints on, on a side road, you know, you got footprints off the path, you know what I'm saying, but Christ taught us, taught us of the way, the way, the truth, and the life, you know, so, so that, that footprints thing, I just think, see, a lot of those things you have to separate, you have to really scrutinize and examine it. It sounds nice, it makes you feel good, but that's because you're still immature. You understand? You, you know, you still haven't grown up to him in all things. Those things seem, you know, they seem right, but then the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end of it is what? Moat. It, it's death. The end of it is the Canaanite god Moat. You understand? The end of it is death. Now, after this verse, it begins chapter 3. Guess what chapter 3 says? It's the apostasy. What does apostasy mean? Falling away. Apostasy means falling away. That means that these ones formerly were doing what Jah required. They were keeping the testimony of Jesus Christos. But somehow, they began to recognize, like when we, when we saw that, that so-called Baptist past, that Baptist so-called preaching. Remember what we said before in another video? Um, maybe you all can remind I and I, if, 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 if you all remember, I, I'll, 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 I'll find it. But in, in, I said this in a couple of videos where I alluded to the fact that, you know, Baptists, who was a Baptist? John. John did what? John lost his 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 his, his mother loving head. Right? 
John, John the, and before he lost his head, what happened? We can say today we would say John lost his mind, because John was the one that pointed out Christ, right? It wasn't John the one that says, "Behold, here comes the Lamb of God." And he is the one who I have said, and I saw the Holy Spirit descending as a dove, and he gave all that testimony. Then he ends up in a little situation. He, he ends up locked up in jail. And then, he's right, and then he sent his disciples, right? He sends his, his, John had his own disciples, because John was the previous, you know, the previous proclaimer before Christ established his ministry. Um, you know, are you the one that we look for, or should we seek another? And then what, what did Christ say? Matthew chapter 11, what did Christ say? Christ said to the fact, but read it and study it for yourself. Um, Christ said to the fact um, that, that um, and he who is least, that of, of those who are born of woman, those who are born of woman, which is speaking of the old motherhood, you understand? Not of the father, but who are born of the mother. He is the greatest. He is the greatest. John, the Baptist. You understand? But by contrast, those who are least in the kingdom, you understand? Least in the kingdom is what is greater than he. Why? Because he was off-ended. Off-ended. If you're off-ended, it's like if you're out of order. You're not in order. You are out of order. And, and, and what John said right there is like if he was in the court, you would have to hammer down the gavel and say, out of order, John. Apologize. Repent of that, man. You know what I mean? But I say that, I, you know, I say that, like I say, I digress. You understand? I say that basically to, to make a connection now with the form of Christianity that um, some of y'all might be offended because y'all Baptists. Y'all grew up in the Baptist. Y'all had a lot of nice experiences in the Baptist church. I'll put that question mark right there for Baptist. So I, want, I want to ask the question, are Baptists really Christian? Maybe that will be another vid, actually, on, on that particular subject matter. Are Baptists really Christian? Ask yourself. Hmm? 